Hey guys, welcome back. We are going to review Bamboo Lab P1P today. I have currently relied on Bamboo Lab machine to do my design prototyping. The fast speed printing have greatly increased my productivity. I have all their other models, plus I need one more machine to run a single color. So why not just having this P1P add to my collection? We are going to go over some of the technical detail, running some test print, and conclude with the final thought. Is a P1P the one go for in 2024? We are going to find out in today's video. Bamboo Lab P1P was introduced to the market in November 2022 with MSRP at $699. With the big success on the flagship printer X1 Carbon, P1P has been carried a lot of attention since it was first released at its core. P1P is a bare-bone version of X1 Carbon. They have removed all the bells and whistles and give the most basic solid structure and the functions at a lower price point and target different customers. A couple of months later, they have added some of the feature back on the P1P and named it P1S. The MSRP for P1S is $699 and the P1P has reduced its price to $599 since then. The biggest and most significant difference is that P1S comes with a full enclosure printing space, you could also upgrade the P1P with a list enclosure key. But it will cost more than buying P1S directly, even with a discount price. So, as Bamboo Lab current entry-level core XY machine, P1P comes with an identical motion system with X1 Carbon and P1S. The extruder is attached to two carbon fiber rods for the x-axis motion, linear rod for both sides of the frame for y-axis motion. The lead screw synchronized with one step motor for the z-axis. As a bamboo last state, the maximum two-head moving speed is able to achieve 500 mm per second with a 20,000 mm per second square acceleration. This is a very fast speed, but you don't typically able to print with this speed. Depends on the filament, complex of a model, and other conditions, you are more likely to print with lower speed to find a balance of the printing speed, printing quality, and the machine life. In my daily routine, I just leave the printing speed default from Bamboo Lab Studio Slicer. It is set at 10,000 mm per second square acceleration and 200 mm per second to 300 mm per second for walls and infills. In a more measurable explanation, this is roughly 2-4 to four times faster than my stock Ender 3 in printing time. P1S have come with a steel chassis that is spot well to give a good structure rigidity for high speed printing. The printing space is not enclosed, but Bamboo Lab has uploaded their frame CAD file so you can design and print in your own enclosure. There are also already a lot of good design out there. I may design something cool for my P1P, we'll see how that goes. P1P has an all metal hot end that is able to reach 300 Celsius maximum printing temperature. The printer bed is able to reach 100 Celsius degrees with double side PEI build plate. It is good enough to take care of all the common filament like PLA, PTG, TPU, even ABS. You could also attempt polycarbonate or nylon carbon fiber occasionally, but not recommend for all stock non hot extruder gear and nozzle. You may see an exceed amount of tear and wear on those components. The early patch of the initial early burp order, P1P does not come with a camera. But they have revised their product packaging strategy for P1P. Now a camera has become a standard on the P1P. You can use this camera to check your printing progress in real time from Bamboo Lab Handy Mobile app or the Bamboo Lab Studio Slicer. It could also record time lapse, but the resolution is very bad in today's standard. P1P comes with a 2.7 inch screen for the cost reduction. It gives most of the feature that you need. The screen is a bit little, but the UI and the feature layout are straightforward and easy to use. You could use a mobile app and slicer to perform most of the work, like sending printing profile, heating extruder, reload the film, and so on. The noise level at 6 feet away. And at a closer distance. Okay. 
The initial setup for P1P is very simple. The printer is well packed within the box. There is a very minimal amount of assembly work needed. You are not required to make adjustments on the moving part neither. P1P does not come with an AMS combo, even though you can still order it separately. But the entire setup might take you from 20 minutes to a half hour. The initial self-functional test and the self-calibration might take around 20 minutes. There is no bad leveling needed. You could simply start a print on the SD card to confirm everything will correctly. Bambula has its own slicer called Bambula Studio Slicer. The default printing profile on the slicer is well calibrated already. So we're just going to leave most of setting default and see how it does right out of the box. As always, we'll run some basic calibration and a functional test print, followed by some more complex model and different filament. Let's get started. Let's start with the Banshee. This Banshee is using all the default profile setting from Bambula Studio Slicer. This bench turned out almost perfect. Beside this whole line, it is nothing related to the printer itself. Other than that, overhand, surface finish, little details, and bridging are really decent. There is barely any ghosting effect across the entire models. Compared to the default profile setting bench you print with my P1S, it looks almost identical to me. Let's continue with the tolerancing test. This model consists of many test subjects. Some edge curving issues. Let's check our overhand first. Both overhand looks amazing. All small tags are almost disappear. That's not good. I'll put the model dimensions on the screen, you'll see the disparency from the actual print. Due to the shrink rate different from different filament, it is normal to have some differences. Continue with the PETG filament. I switch a layer height to 0.28mm since this model is very simple and does not have require a lot of details. The end result turns pretty good. Let's switch the TPU filament. I made a little cover for the frame since the TTFE tube keeps rubbing on it. This print turned out good. All the layers are fused well together. Continue with another TPU filament. I want to run this model that has a lot intensive amount of retraction. Consider this is a stress test for printing TPU. The print successfully finished. We first noticed that there is a good amount of stringing.
The model itself has okay surface finish. I'll concede it passed the stress test. Let's compare to the same print from P1S. Next, we are going to print grow in a dark ABS. I have found that there is a little curve on the first layer during printing, but it is still stay on the build plate, so I just leave it as it to continue with the print. It is a little hard to catch this color on camera. All the layer lines are hard to observe. But we can clear to see all overhand are look decent. When I switch to PLA carbon fiber blend filament on the bamboo last steel slicer, there's a warning pops out, reminds me that it is better to print with a harder nozzle. Let's skip and continue our print. I did not apply any glue stick on the build plate, but this filament does not have an issue sticking on the PEI sheet. We got one outstanding printing result. Compare the same film and printout from X1 Carbon. This PLA carbon fiber blend is relatively easy to print compared to another nylon carbon fiber blend. But this print result have proved that occasionally printing those filaments is doable, even though not recommended. Final thoughts of Bambula P1P. I would like to give a detailed breakdown of the current Bambula printer lineup before we go over other stuff. Currently, Bambula has five different models for regular hobbyists. One model X1E, it's more targeting to enterprise customer. A1 currently is under recall, so it shows not available. The lowest price A1 Mini is 299 without the AMS light but it has a very limited printing value of 180mm. Next, it was supposed to be A1 with a 399 filling between the A1 Mini and the P1P for entry-level machine. P1P is $599, P1S $699. If we are going to get P1S combo, it's gonna be $949. P1P does not have a combo option. If you would like to have a P1P with AMS, you are looking at 599 plus 349, and this is going to be 948 dollars. It is almost no brand that just go for a P1S if you want an AMS come with a printer. Then X1 Carbon costs a lot more money. Let's go back to the P1P itself. As we mentioned earlier on the technical detail, P1P come with the same motion system as a P1S and X1 Carbon. The printer speed and printing quality is in line with those two machines. It's currently the top tier hobby level 3D printer in terms of printing speed, printing quality, capability, and reliability. It is also one of the easiest and most beginner friendly 3D printer to get into the hobby. There's no manual bed leveling needed, a very minimum amount of work for initial setup. The printer itself will do the most calibration work like bed leveling, Resonation compensation. The Bampula Studio Slicer profile is very well dialed, and the mobile app is well thought out and highly integrated with the machine. It could handle most of the film essentially well. 
you could still print some of those exotic filaments like nylon carbon fiber or polycarbonate, but it is not recommended to do with it frequently. It will wear out those stock non-hardened extruder gear and nozzle very quickly. This is just a machine that will meet most people's needs with a relatively affordable price point. Well, still a bit expensive though, but the machine is not perfect. P1P is a long machine during high-speed printing. Unlike a P1S, you can shut off an enclosure to reduce some noise. P1P has a full open printing space that does not have anything to isolate noise. The noise is going to pass through the drywall and you can hear from other side of the rooms. Due to the open printing space, the machine will be a bit more sensitive to the surrounding environment. You might encounter a bit of a challenge to print ABS and carbon fiber blend filament during winter time. P1P also does not have a chamber fan and active carbon filter, so you will need to ventilation while printing those smelly filaments. The motion system on P1P is directly exposed to the surrounding environment and dirt can easily get into there on those moving parts. If you have a cat and dogs at home, you'll find hair easily trapped on the linear rod and a lead screw. This will require a bit more maintenance. Same as any other bamboo lab printers, P1P is a cold source printer, so you may not be able to make a change on the framework according to your preference like modding or clipper framework does. I think 90% of people won't really care about this, but just for your information. The hardware on P1P is highly integrated. The steel frame is spot welded. You want to confirm the frame is not damaged due to shipping when you're first doing the open box, since it's almost impossible to repair on your own. Not very common though, but I have seen some people post a picture about damaged frame during the shipping once in a while. Some other component is a bit harder to repair and replace. Bambula wiki page has a very detailed instruction cover almost every single part assembled and disassembled for this printer. Highly doable for most people, just require a bit more patience. Because of the popularity of this machine, if you are planning to own this long term, you won't need to worry about power supply in the future. It will be highly available. The official store has all the tier and wear components. A lot of uh, third-party alternative power costs a bit less of money. The nozzle and hot end are combined part. So whenever you replace a nozzle, you will replace the entire hot end with it. It costs a bit more compared to traditional V6 nozzle, but consider that my P1S still having a stock non hardened nozzle with almost 900 hours on it, and it's still running strong. So it will actually save you some money on those parts in the long term ownership. From my personal perspective, you will compare the price with the P1S and the price of the enclosure kit. If you are going to think in a future day, you want to do a multi-color printing and printing more type of filament other than PRA and PTG in a later day, it will make a lot more sense just go for a P1S or P1S combo. You will get a lot more value for this $100 upgrade. Even if you don't do multi-color print frequently, the AMS unit will still be a good tool for keeping your filament dry. It is a great printer, but P1S just offering a lot more value for $100 more. I guess I will just leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you soon.